Hello Sizzix fans, welcome once again to my vlog. I'm Pete, uh, I'm a designer here at Sizzix, but you know that because you're watching my vlog, don't you? Anyway, today, now, we, we all know about die cutting, we love our die cutting. Die cutting has taken the crap world by storm over the last 10 years. But we've kind of forgotten about embossing, which is such a shame because I love my embossing folders. Whether using them as a background or for adding texture to a die cut, they're fantastic. And I think, I think they haven't fallen out of favour, it's just kind of we've forgotten how to use them. So today I'm going to take this opportunity to show you a couple of nice little techniques. Now I'm going to be using my fold away machine and we need our plates, obviously lovely Christmassy glitter plates, but we don't need the top section of our platform. That's if you want to use your wafer thin dies. If you want to emboss and do other things as well, we work on the bottom or the base of our platform, the very thick piece. Now, the folders I'm using today, I know you can't see them very well, but we'll see what happens when they're embossed. This one's called Birch, and it's by Tim Holtz. And this is simple snowflakes. So they're gonna work lovely together. I promise you. Now, as I said, it's fold away time. So let's open this up and just to press the button there. That flips the handle down. And that slots into place like so, and we're all ready to go. The first one I'm gonna take is the snowflake pattern. Now I'm gonna emboss this but I'm going to be using the debossed side. That's where the impression goes into the card rather than comes out of it. So I'll make a sandwich between my two plates as we do with all our lovely dies, whether they be bigs or thinlets or framelets. And I'm going to place that on the bottom of my platform like so. Now, wind this through. And out comes the other end. And I hope you can pick this up. But I'll, I'll move it about slightly. So there's the embossed pattern. That's absolutely gorgeous. And that's the debossed side. That's the side that I'm going to be working on. But I'll put it to one side just for a moment and take my birch folder. And you know, I've got to be honest, if you saw this folder in a store, you'd probably think, what's that all about? I don't, I don't really get that. but. And I understand that, but you know, these birch trees, both in die cuts, in rubber stamps, on papers, and everything, are a really popular motif at the moment for, for Christmas crafting. So, this comes out absolutely beautifully. But obviously with a stamp you don't get the dimension, you don't get the depth. Whereas with this, you do, and, and, and I know at this stage, you're gonna to have to stay with me on this, folks, but you can see there the patterns in there, but we're gonna transform that into a birch tree. Trust me. So, that's all my embossing. So there's no die cutting, I can't remember the last time I did something like this without any die cutting whatsoever. And this is just all about the embossing. Now, remember a birch pattern? What I'm going to do is take some chalk paint. You could use gesso, you could use a white acrylic. It's entirely up to you. But I like the quality that the chalk paint gives me. It's slightly different, but you know, it's very subjective. It's horses for courses. It's entirely up to you, whatever you have to hand, basically. Now, I'm going to go, I think I'm going to need some more paint on this, but it's always better to start off with less. Yeah, and see what's happening there where I go over the deboss side of that? It's starting to bring out that lovely texture. I am going to need more so. There, get a bigger blob this time. Yeah, and, and like I always say, you know, you can always add more, but you can never take it away. And I've seen many a project ruined by people getting a bit too enthusiastic with a ink or paint. Um, so we'll keep that coming. Like so, that's looking lovely now. Starting to get there. So that's my second coat. I'm going to add one more for luck. 
And it starts when this dries out as well, when you put in the brake, it starts to break up slightly. So you start getting a little bit of texture in there as well. Now let's, you know what, I don't know my own strength sometimes. A bit more, there. Right, let's put that on firmly. And last time, we'll run that through. And we'll apply that. Ah, no, that's, that's what I wanted. That's really nice. A bit more. So we're getting, we're getting the texture, we're getting the color, and we're getting that lovely embossed, or rather debossed, because obviously the other side is embossed. We'll see how that looks there. It's completely opposite. Um, but now that's ready to go. You can do this with blue card, you can do it with um, brown card, or black card even, it doesn't really matter. But I want this to kind of blend in with my background as well. So that's already kind of dry to the touch, but I'm gonna put it to one side anyway. And I'm gonna introduce my white embossed background. Before I do, let's just clear up some of that chalk paint. Great thing about chalk paint as well is you can come back and it just scrapes away. You don't even need to add water once it's dried off. So there we have it. Now, time to add some distressing to my background. So that's the deboss side, as we said earlier. And with distressings, when you're building a background, it's always good to start with the lightest color. And I'm gonna start with Broken China. And I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, come on, Pete, stop with the broken China. You're always using broken China. Well, I'm completely unapologetic. I love this color. So there we are, we'll move in there. It's a lovely, lovely blue. lovely it's quite subtle but you can see the difference that it's made to that deboss texture there now next up we're going for peacock feathers which is which blends beautifully with this and there's slightly more green in it it's almost a it's almost a turquoise peacock feathers as the name would suggest of course uh, you can even add crushed olive you know that, that, that lovely green color that would freshen it up but uh, that would be a bit too much because, yeah, that's another colour I use all the time. I know, I know. There we are. Now, one of my favourite... <laughs> I say this all the time. One of my favourite colours, but it's true, is Chip Sapphire. It's blue, but it's got a hint of purple in it, as, again, as the name would suggest. Like a lovely sapphire. Now, Go around the edge with this. Doesn't that just add that, that glorious depth? And it sits beautifully alongside the peacock feathers as well. They complement each other so well. There we are. And just come down this edge. Now, this is where I'm going to be brave and I'm going to introduce black soot. You might think that's a bit crazy for a snowflakey background, but it. It really does help this edge to pop out, especially when you place it onto a white background. But you probably notice that I haven't got a lot of ink on the pad, just a little again. As we were saying earlier, you can always add more. Never, ever take it away. Once it's done, it's done. It's different with acrylics. You can just paint over the top again, but right now, it's almost ready to go. What I want to do, though, and I know some feel this is sacrilege, I'm actually going to tear across the base of this like that. Hopefully it's going to look great when it's on my project. So then, and we'll put that to one side. And I'm going to spritz. Now this is, this is a mister. Uh, there's clean water in this. And I'm going to hold it not too close, about six inches or 15 centimeters away. For those of us who think in metric, it's a generational thing. And we're gonna spritz that there and just let that soak a little into the car. And you can probably see it start to speckle. And I'm gonna lift some of that 
away with just a tissue or a piece of kitchen roll. And it adds a little more texture to my, and almost like a snowy texture to be honest with you, to my background. We'll, we'll put a bit more in that corner, a bit down there. And not only does it give me that lovely texture, but it also some has got on the background and it allows me to clean up afterwards. Right now, we're ready to go. We're nearly ready to go. You know what? I'm going to add some more white to this. I know, I'm sorry. I could let it go at that, but I'm a perfectionist sometimes. So we'll blob some of that down there. I knew I needed something. It wasn't quite where I wanted it. I kind of changed my mind halfway through. And there. That's it. Good to go. Now, this is my birch tree. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this. You can use you can use a paper trimmer, it's entirely up to you. But you know if you go down over scissors, it doesn't matter if that edge is imperfect. It really doesn't, because have you ever seen a completely straight tree? I certainly haven't. Now, run that up there. I'll cut three, that will give me options, and then I'll do a couple of thinner ones as well. There. Fantastic. Now, for the main trees, these are going to sit against the background. And with this background, I want to use some double-sided tape. So that's going to attach it to my white base card. So I'll get a couple of strips of tape. Thus, and that, that's why you need to keep constantly cleaning up these uh, these craft mats because you don't want any of that ink to transfer to your lovely cardstock. So, and I'm being extra careful because I, I haven't cleaned my fingers. So. I don't want to make any uh, nasty fingerprints on this either. So there. We'll pop that in place just left of center, like that. And for my birch trees, they, they're going to sit kind of on the background like that. I haven't decided exactly how they're going to go as yet, but they are going to go. Um, trim the top of that one. Maybe a little more off the base. And I'll use my glue gun to apply these. So You can use double-sided tape, you can use foam pads, it doesn't really matter, but I always think, especially when you're working against ink surfaces, Sometimes these things don't stick down in place as well as we'd like. So the glue gun is very handy for that. It gives us that permanence. But of course, once it's down, it's down. There's no turning back. So we do need to be brave sometimes. And there we are. We'll put that one there. And I've got my thinner one, so I have a branch coming off there. And now I can just tear. It doesn't really matter. Bit more glue on there, and that branch is going to come off at a slight angle there. And then the second one, maybe we do a branch by there. How does that look? Yeah, me too. Perfect. Uh, that is going to sit there, like so. And we're nearly done, and I'm sure you'd agree that that now looks every inch the winter birch tree. Um, I printed this, um, or oh, did I stamp it? I stamped this, it says Winter Wonderland. And I can trim this to size. Kind of a funky angle. Now we'll turn that over. A bit more double-sided tape. This is great, this finger lift tape is marvellous, it's so much easier to peel off. And we'll stick it on the blue before 
trimming that into a border. Again, it doesn't have to be completely and perfectly parallel to the edge. In fact, if it isn't, it usually works better. And that, my friends, is that. That completes the look. Winter Wonderland. And there we have it. Thank you, thank you very much for joining me and being patient and watching uh, my demonstration. Now, go to your cupboard, get your embossing folders out. Think of new techniques to use them. Send them to me, I'd love to see them. I seriously would send them to the blog. Now, if you want to know any more about embossing folders or see some of the products that we have, or even if you just want a little more inspiration, then go to sizzix.co.uk. Thank you for watching. See you again soon. Bye.